Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. And if you're here for a second or third or fourth video, thank you so much for your support. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it and welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be giving tribute to Van Gogh and kind of focusing on his very expressive, impressionistic style and painting uh, one of his iconic pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And Van Gogh is a very popular paint at home subject matter. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. With this painting and any painting that I teach, you are more than welcome to switch out colors, uh, change it up, make it your own. Um, and quite a few people do that even with the old master painting. So feel free to change out and make it what you want. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are all the colors, paints, brushes, surfaces that you might need to get started painting at home. So grab any of those extra uh, supplies that you might need and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas without having to stress out about drawing and without basically having to stress out. So check the link below to where to acquire the traceable. And there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable to your surface. When you are a little bit more comfortable with your painting process and you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my uh, featured course on there, Paint Your Pet. And you will be painting from your own pet photograph and I'll go through the process on how to break it down and pick which photo and go through the process of painting. But when you paint something you care about, it's a whole new ball game for you. And you actually learn more and you put more energy into um, making it awesome. And it's your pet, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check it out and just keep evolving your skills as you get more and more into the creative process. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys this is gonna be another fun painting so grab your supplies and head over to where you have your setup this is gonna be a good intro to Van Gogh and as always make sure you take your progress photos so once you have your traceable transferred to your surface um, on mine on the video I did outline it with a black sharpie for my students that do want to pause the video and draw what they see so if you transferred with a traceable, your lines will not be this dark. You do not have to do this unless you want to. So we are starting off with the medium flat brush and yellow paint. And we're gonna fill in pretty much the whole left side of this little cafe scene. We're painting the roof right now, um, and then we'll paint the walls and the floor and everything, and then do some wet on wet blending um, on top of that. Now, as you saw the little note pop up just a moment ago, if you're using student grade paint, it may be a bit on the transparent side. So I do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker um, just for more coverage. It's a little more opaque. And then when you do some of your blending, it'll make it a little bit easier. All right, so if you're painting right now and you're holding your breath, please take a big inhale, just relax. I'm really proud of you for painting. Um, and definitely painting one of Van Gogh's uh, iconic pieces. This is a really popular one. All right, so we've filled in this whole space with yellow paint. Now what we're gonna do is the wet on wet blending, but we're gonna do a tiny amount. So you can see that I grabbed that raw sienna and literally just kind of placed it in that corner and then using super light pressure, I'm pulling that raw sienna back into the yellow. And again, as you paint more and more, you're gonna get comfortable with this pressure and with the blending. So if this is your first time doing it, be kind to yourself um, and just know that it gets better with more practice. So as we do this blending, um, we're gonna do this with the raw sienna and then we'll actually make it kind of a light green color. Um, for this particular area, less is more. So we're really just adding a small amount of this different color pigment into the yellow 
and then just blending it together. And you can only do this while your paint is wet, and that's why it's called wet on wet blending. And if you happen to ever get into watercolor, um, you'll kind of do the same thing. Like a little bit of pigment goes a long way in watercolor. So here, as we're doing this particular blending, a little bit of pigment goes a long way. So here we're making a very, very, very light yellow, uh, uh, yellow green, sorry. Um, so you can see where I put that green next to the yellow and then just kind of slowly pulled it in there into the yellow. And again, less is more. So if yours is a little bit darker or lighter than mine, that's okay. Feel free to adjust if you feel like it. And as you're observing the video, I want you to just notice the placement that I put each of these colors and then do the best of your ability to mimic that on your canvas. So pause the video, take your progress photo. You're gonna clean your brush really good and we're gonna move into shades of blue. And we're gonna start off with kind of a light blue and it's probably a little closer to a medium blue that I, uh, a light medium blue that I use here. Again, if your shade is a little bit different than mine, completely okay. Um, and with that being said, if you even want to completely switch out totally different colors, go right ahead and do that. This is your painting. Um, and it's fun when you do kind of deviate and make it your own. So again, using this light blue, we're moving on to the buildings. Um, I am moving right on top of those black lines that I put on there at the beginning. If you did not have the Sharpie marker on yours, um, you may not be able to see uh, when you paint over the traceable lines from the carbon paper. So maybe go around it or adjust as you need to. All right, and again with acrylic paint, if you paint something in an area that you don't didn't want it there or maybe later decide it needed to be a different color, uh, acrylic paint is really nice that you can layer your paint um, on top of another, on top of the first color. All right, so here grabbing a bit darker blue, a little bit more blue, kind of a medium, um, as we move into the buildings that are further and further down the street. And this is coming together nicely. And if you have to mix your color two or three times, um, don't stress on getting the exact same shade. Each time you mix your color, your brain's kind of recognizing what it looks like when you add pigment to one color and the, the various changes. So again, with more practice, um, your blending becomes easier, your applying the paint becomes a little bit more comfortable. So be kind to yourself if this is your beginning stages of painting. It does get better. And kind of the best part about painting is just you get lost into this canvas for a little bit and forget about the rest of the world. All right, so moving down to that light blue, and move it across the street to the other building just so there's a little bit of a change and it is kind of nice to see that light blue next to the darker sky there and just kind of how it starts changing with your changing your perception all right so now this was actually blue and black mixture and when you're mixing black a little bit goes a long way so if you have to mix a couple of piles um, as you're getting comfortable with that that's okay as well now I kind of stick with this middle flat brush. I have the tendency to just stick with the same brush. So if you need to, feel free to use that small pointy brush as you get into smaller details. You do not have to use the exact brush that I'm using all the time. All right, another good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna go back to that medium blue and yep, move over to the left-hand side, the little doorway. And we'll kind of do the same thing that we did to the other buildings. We have our light blue and then or our medium blue and then we'll go a little bit darker and then we'll add a touch of black. And by adding these different shades, this is what we call our value scale. Um, we're looking for a shadow, a midtone, and a highlight. And this is how we create this illusion on a flat surface. So the more you get into painting and creativity, the more that will become kind of a uh, commonplace concept for you. All right, here with the blue paint, kind of filling the interior of that doorway or the frame of the doorway, and then grabbing some of that blue and black mixture. And again, as you're painting at home, please just kind of observe where you see me place it and then mimic that to the best of your ability. By strengthening your power of observation, 
Um, it just makes really everything in life better the more observant you are. Um, and that is probably one of the biggest elements of art is observation. So here you can see where I grabbed some white, placed it directly on the wet paint, and then wiped my brush off, and then went back and kind of blended some of that white into the blue. Again, doing that wet on wet blending method. All right, this is coming together nicely. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the blue and black mixture, kind of work off the rest, work in the rest of those buildings. Um, and then we'll move into the cobblestone street. But as you get into the groove of painting, and especially as you start getting rid of the white canvas space, I want you to get in the habit of looking at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Um, this is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and for especially artwork. So learning to look at your painting from that distance is only gonna help you grow your skills. And it's totally okay if you see something from a distance that you need to change, go in and change that. All right, so now we're moving into a very light raw sienna. So white with a little bit of the raw sienna pigment. And again, a little bit goes a long way. And here you can see where I kind of placed that first color and then I actually grabbed a big glob of white, placed it on the canvas and then used that first part of the paint that I added and mixed it in with the white. So again, trust your instincts. If you feel like you need to adjust your color after you've applied your first brush stroke, um, full permission, go right ahead and adjust that color. So we did fill in the all the, basically the ground here, and then we grabbed that medium blue, and again, just slapping that color on there, observe where I put it. Then we're gonna wipe that brush off, wipe off any excess pigment, and then with a light pressure, you're gonna blend that into that creamy base. And again, this it does get easier with more practice um, and getting kind of comfortable with just what it feels like to blend paint. So remember to breathe. Do not hold your breath on this part. Um, if you're finding that your brush is kind of shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. All right, so same thing with yellow. Got to slap it on there. Wipe off any excess paint on the brush if you need to. And then just go back and kind of uh, slap it on there. And Van Gogh is very expressive. So these do not have to be perfect. It does not have to be smooth. Um, in fact, if you actually paint this kind of quick, it creates a nice texture and um, kind of quick sketchy feel. So basically just have fun with this, throw some paint on the canvas. All right, so now we're moving into yellow and then yellow with a touch of orange as we fill in the windows um, on the building over there. And again, another place to pause your video and take a progress photo. I do recommend letting this dry and then you're gonna put your layers on top of it. So when you let acrylic paint dry um, and then you put a new layer on top of it, it's almost like a fresh canvas with this as your base. So you won't be able to do any of the mixing that we did when we were doing the wet on wet blending. I am using a small pointy brush now and we're using yellow or yellow and white mixture. And I'm actually doing the yellow and white mixture just because it kind of, the white's a little bit thicker more opaque than my yellow paint. And basically putting where the stars are, and we're gonna be going through and adding all the details on top of this. So as we get into this point, um, most of my videos are geared towards first time and beginner painters. So as you get to this point, I actually want you to Google the Van Gogh cafe scene and pull up the original of what he painted. And I want you to look at the details that would be added and if you feel like adding more details than I did, go right ahead and do that. So here we're using white, and again using kind of light pressure as we make these shapes. And again, just look at them as shapes. We've got kind of a long sideways rectangle, and then these ellipses, these are gonna be the tabletops. And again, you're just observing where I place it and mimicking that on your canvas. Or you are looking at the original painting and mimicking what you see on your canvas. Maybe adding a lot more detail than I've added here. Uh, maybe adding more colors. But go right ahead and just uh, make it your own. And again, you're strengthening that power of observation. So 
So as you're working with the pointy brush, again, I want you to play with the pressure of the brush. Light pressure is gonna create a little skinnier line and you can use it like a pencil and just use the tip of the brush. More pressure is gonna create a wider line. All right, so going back to that yellow and white mixture, basically just little dash marks for where the windows um, on these buildings would be illuminated from. So moving on to black paint and the pointy brush. And again, we're gonna be adding a lot of details and using the brush with light pressure. So if you need to, you can add a touch of water to your black paint to give it a little bit more fluidity. Uh, fluidity. Um, if your paint is already kind of runny, do not add water to it. And again, I want you to just use the tip of the brush, kind of treat it like a pencil. And if you need to, you can put your pinky out, put that on a dry spot on your canvas, and then use that as your pivot point. Or what I'm actually doing in the video and you can't see is I'm resting my forearm against the edge of the table. But do whatever you need to do to kind of steady your hand so you can kind of play with this pressure. And if you happen to have some wide lines, some skinny lines, have a variety in there, completely okay. That's just where you're painting for today. And again, just mimicking um, what you see where I'm placing this or mimicking what you see from the original painting, um, whichever one you are referencing. And one of my favorite reminders to give all my students, remember to breathe. Do not hold your breath while you're making some of these lines. It does not help. And if your brush is shaky as you're going to apply this, that does mean you're holding your breath. So laugh at yourself. Uh, relax a little bit and then pick up your painting and keep on going. All right, so we're creating these tables, the base of the tables and even the chairs. So if pause the video as needed and just observe these shapes, like these are basically a half circle, um, little squares, straight lines for the chairs, and they do not have to be perfect. Like I said, Van Gogh is a very expressive uh, painter and used actually oil paint so it was great to get that thickness and the different colors that would hold in there. Um, acrylic paint is a little more versatile and easier for at home use and does not smell as bad as oils. So as you're getting into seeing these little almost little figures in the cafe they do not have to be perfect. Um, if you're looking at the original there is much more detail in there so you can mimic that if you want. But if you're one of my first time painters and you're going based on this video um, just kind of little scribbles, little dots, little overlapping dots. Don't put too much energy or too much thought into it. It's an impression that there are people sitting in the cafe over there. All right, and again, remember to breathe. This is coming along very nicely. Very proud of you for painting at home or if you're in the classroom, painting in the classroom. All right, so adding the details to the buildings and it's amazing how much just kind of this cleans it up. All right, and no matter what you guys paint today, please send me pictures. I really enjoy seeing those and share this with your community. Um, it's really through you guys sharing what you do that encourages other people to paint. And if you found this to be kind of stress relieving and relaxing, maybe somebody else will find it stress relieving and relaxing as well. So again, share this with your community. Even if you end up not liking painting and you get into ceramics or something else, um, whatever creative form you're getting into, please share that with your people. All right, so getting in those final details, and there we go. So moving back to a few different colors. There we go. We got our green and we're going to put in that tree that's kind of hanging out on the edge. And I'm literally just slapping this on there. Um, we're going to throw a little bit of yellow in there and then a little bit of black again, uh, slapping that paint on there, very expressive. And it gives our brain the indication that there is a tree overlapping the edge of the canvas and moving into the raw sienna and the pointy brush adding the details to our chairs and anything else you may want to add to your painting. 
again. I'm so proud of you guys for painting. Great job today. I do look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting. I'm really proud of you. Good job. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly is through you guys sharing my channel and videos, you sharing your work that encourages other people to paint. Um, and then when I post your guys' pictures on my social media, it encourages more people to paint. So please keep spreading the word. This channel is as successful as it is based on your guys' support and feedback. So you have brought it here. Let's keep it going. Um, any questions, comments, things you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the description box below and I'll add it to my production list. And um, keep on painting. Keep on getting creative. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.